Good morning. Thanks for joining me today at Cuddles and Milk in Petaluma. Today is episode six. We are talking about tongue tie again. Last time we talked about a what to expect day of procedure and a little bit of aftercare. Um, today I really want to delve into the aftercare because what happens after the procedure is really important. Okay, so you've you know, gone through all this other stuff. You've had the trouble breastfeeding. You've had possibly even trouble bottle feeding. You've had the assessment, the diagnosis, the procedure. Now we're a few days after, you know, you think, okay, everything's all better and done, right? Not quite. So it's kind of like having surgery. You really need to keep up on things for a little while. Ideally, you're doing those exercises um, the stretching exercises in the mouth before every feed for five weeks, okay? By about three weeks, you should be able to start dropping that nighttime feed, but it's really fast, guys. I mean, we're talking, you know, if they've got an upper lip tie, you put your finger right in here, right underneath, and you go, press, done. Like, literally, it's one second. Under the tongue, same thing. You push down, press, done so fast you guys can get used to doing these really fast if they had the side buccal ties you could do press 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 under the tongue press if they had the lower lip press five of them be done in no time okay those are really fast um and super important because you don't want the body to heal with that tight scar tissue and i don't want you to go backwards so sometimes it happens where baby has a release everything feels better mama's like yay breastfeeding is painless i love this and feeling so much better and then a week or two or three weeks later really commonly three or four weeks later the body is reattached without maintaining that stretch and all of a sudden mama's like oh it hurts again like at every latch is so painful my nipples are sore it didn't work well it's not that it didn't work it's that it reattached because that's what the body will do if we don't make it stay loose and flexible okay that's why those exercises are so important. So let's do it one time and get the exercises done so that you don't have to have it redone. Okay. Um, and then as far as the sucking exercises, so after you're doing those little stretches, you really should be meeting with the lactation consultant and doing some body work. Really, those are the ways to get the optimal result. If you're going to do this, let's get it all done so that everything so you're not just okay. So you're not just fine with your breastfeeding, but it's really phenomenal. It's amazing. It's relaxing. It's painless. It's wonderful. Let's get you there. So a couple of visits with lactation, usually one or two after the procedure. Lactation consult can show you some suck training exercises where you use your finger in the baby's mouth to get the baby using their tongue and doing these exercises can review those stretches with you, right? And then some body work. I really love chiropractic or some cranial sacral where they can help kind of release in here all this type of stuff that might be holding baby just a little off or just a little tight. Those things can really help. And with babies, chiropractic is so gentle. If you've ever seen it, pediatric um, chiropractor is really amazing. They just kind of, they put their finger and they do these little gentle shakes. It's not like we think of where chiropractic is a little bit more intense for adults where there's some pressure. It's not like that at all. Babies are so soft and so easily adjusted that all they need to do is a very gentle, and this, sometimes they call it, my girls go and they call it a little wiggle. They put their fingers down, they do just a little wiggle. And it's so gentle for babies. So all they need is like a little suggestion of how their body should be aligned better and then they're good, okay? So doing that is really important too. So set yourself up for success. Have some lactation afterwards have some, do those suck training exercises, do some body work, and really most important number one thing to do, do your stretches before every feed for a month. Four or five weeks is what you're looking at. Yes, it's a long time, but it takes you like five seconds before every feed. It's boop, 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 done. Before the baby can even really get upset, you're done. And that's if you had all those areas. If you only had like upper lip and tongue, you're like boop, boop, done. It's so fast. Okay, it's really, really helpful, and I highly encourage you to do it. You've gone to all this trouble and put the baby through it, and I know it was so hard as a parent to think that your baby's in pain, but if you don't do these stretches, it'll be worse. All right, next week we are going to be talking about what happens when you choose not to do tongue tie treatments and what some of the signs can be that your baby or your toddler or child 
might have an untreated tongue tie, okay? Might give you some clues that there could be some tethered oral tissues, we call it, okay? So that there might be some restriction and what the restrictions can lead to for later in life, all right? Well, I hope this was helpful for you after the phrenectomy, and I hope that you're out there nursing and having a great day, okay? Check me out at www.cuddlesandmilk.com. I'm here in Petaluma helping mamas breastfeed and just trying to make life easier for everybody, okay? Have a great day. Bye.